What's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng. Today we're going to be diving into episode 5 of our Built Different series. In case you're not familiar with it, we use this series to break down powerful Korean builds with a fun mini game on the side. Be sure to stay tuned so you don't miss out. On your left you'll see two bars with one indicating risk and the other carry potential. These are color coordinated to help you figure out how useful yet difficult the builds are. Let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong we've got Lee Sin in the top lane. With his buffs, Lee Sin not only appeared more often in the jungle, but he has made his debut in the top lane. Within this lane, Lee is able to take on any and all challengers as he's the king of brawling. He offers great short trades, easy gank dodging, disengage, and can massively snowball with even the smallest of leads. If your jungler ever looks to fight for Herald or even Invade, Lee Sin can single-handedly win the fight with his powerful skirmishing power. Overall, if you're looking for a versatile top laner that loves to skirmish, you should check out Lee Sin. Taking a look at his popular Korean build, you'll be taking Flash and Teleport as your summoner spells. As for your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Revitalize. These runes will help you take extended fights with ease while also helping you sustain. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Ravenous Hydra, Defensive Boots, Iceborne Gauntlet, Black Cleaver, Death Stance, and Maul of Mamordius. Lee Sin offers a powerful laning phase, but in order to truly take advantage of it, you'll need a lot of practice. On top of this, while he does have a relatively basic kit, his skill ceiling is one of the highest in the game. If you really want to lock the true potential, you'll need to practice and study his combos. On the bright side, even with your poor mechanics and mediocre laning, you'll still become a drain tank and can frontline for your allies later on. Overall, Lee Sin is a solid pick that only gets better the more you practice him. Moving on to our next pick, we've got Maokai Top. While Maokai hasn't seen much play in the top lane, it seems that he's finally found a home here again. After repeated nerfs his powerful jungle and support roles, he is now back to being a tanky top lane option. Maokai allows you to play extremely aggressive during the laning phase thanks to his high sustain and one-sided trading patterns. Once you're out of the lane, you can easily provide great utility and frontline for your allies while they safely damage the enemy. If a priority carry steps too far, you can even CC chain them with ease. Overall, if you need a top lane tank that can dominate the game, you should enjoy Maokai. Diving into his build, make sure you take Ignite and Teleport as your summoner spells. Your runes are going to consist of Grasp, Demolish, Second Wind, Unflinching, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. These runes will help you take aggressive trades during the laning phase while also letting you secure some free plates. Looking at your items, you'll be building Sunfire Aegis, Defensive Boots, Even Shroud, Abyssal Mask, Thorn Mail, or Frozen Heart, and then finish off with the Force of Nature. Maokai is a powerful top laner at the moment due to his great laning phase and survivability. On top of this, he can easily set up ganks for his jungler with the extensive amount of CC in his kit. While he can't necessarily carry every game, his ability to provide utility means that the higher rank you go, the easier it is to win with Maokai. Before we continue on with our other Korean builds, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGads.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGads family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video and into the jungle, we've got Diana. Ever since her rework, Diana has held an incredibly high pick rate, especially within the jungle. Whenever she becomes a good pick, it's usually because one of her items got buffed or it's because of a new tank item to abuse. In this case, her favorite item, Nashra's Tooth, just got a big buff. Diana Jungle may not be the easiest to play at times, but she more than makes up for it with some amazing team comp versatility, damage, and overall fun gameplay. Whether you're picking her up for your Yasuo duo or just because she's strong, we're sure that you'll find some success with her either way. Taking a look at her build, you'll be taking Flash and Smite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. These runes will give you a ton of skirmishing power both early on and into the late game. Moving on to your items, you'll be building Nashra's Tooth, Sorcerer's Shoes, Iceborne Gauntlet, Rabidon's Death Cap, Abyssal Mask, and Void Staff. Diana's biggest hurdle in the jungle was her moderate clear speed. While she could clear the jungle, it wasn't as easy as it was with other champions. Thanks to the changes to Nashra's Tooth, she can clear the jungle significantly faster and healthier. Alongside this, Diana provides her team with amazing team fighting and skirmishing power thanks to her ultimate. Just be careful trying to do anything without it unless you're fed. Moving on to our next jungle pick, we've got the Blob from Zaun. Zack has recently made a reappearance in the jungle after dominating the meta due to his powerful ganks. While he may not permanently gank anymore, he can still keep up with power farming junglers thanks to his new, cheap build. Zack has always been a great champion thanks to his great engage, tanky stats, and powerful sustain. Combine this with a single damaging item like Demonic and it becomes a team fighting menace. If you're looking for a tank jungle to add to your arsenal, make sure you check out this living weapon. 
Typing into his build, you're going to be taking Ignite and Smite as your summoner spells. As for your runes, make sure you take Aftershock, Font of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize, Triumph, and Last Stand. These runes will not only help you become extremely tanky, but they'll also give your team some nice utility thanks to Font of Life. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Sunfire, Boots of Lucidity, Even Shroud, Demonic Embrace, Thornmail, and Spare Visage. Zack is a relatively easy champion to pilot and he offers great clear. He can easily stay healthy early on and can match the clear speed of most junglers in the meta. While his E does get hard countered by things like Popular Thresh, you should be able to play around this fairly easily. To ensure that he doesn't get outpaced by full clear junglers, he uses his build to spike as fast as possible. That way, he can get his team an early lead. Plus, the combination of Even Shroud, Thornmail, and Font of Life makes it so that he's constantly providing his allies with various buffs. Taking us into the mid lane, we've got Silas. Silas is a champion that is only as good as his W cooldown is. That being said, the changes to Cosmic Drive alongside some tanky items have turned him into an unkillable monster. Silas thrives at skirmishing early on, and using the enemy's ultimate to tear them apart. Should they ever dare to pick Malphite, you'll quickly see their Jinx disappear with a blink of an eye. While he can be relatively challenging to play due to his high mechanics and necessary decision making, his power makes him worth learning. If you're looking for a mage that loves to play like a bruiser, make sure you try out Silas. Moving on to the build itself, make sure you take Flash and Teleport as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend of Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Unflinching. These runes will help you by giving you some early survivability and some great damage during your early skirmishes. Taking a look at your items, you'll be building Cosmic Drive, Lucidity Boots, Iceborne Gauntlet, Shadow Flame, Rabadons, and finish off with either Zhonya's for additional defense or Void Staff for extra damage. Silas can be an incredibly difficult champion to play and his laning phase is no different. Due to this volatility, you can't really afford to fall behind. To reduce the chances of this happening, you should invest some time learning the champion before pulling it out in ranked. On the bright side, if you do survive the laning phase or end up getting fed, you're nearly unstoppable and unkillable. Between your low W cooldown and your defensive items, you can easily keep yourself alive and skirmish non-stop. Overall, the only way to really lose as Silas is being far too greedy early. Now before we move on to our final few Korean builds of the video, let's not forget about everybody's favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, if you could add a new champion mechanic to the game, what would it be? I personally would love to have a champion that attacks using minions from afar. Something like a hive mind character. Regardless of what it may be, make sure you let us know in the comment section down below. Anyway, let's dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got our ADC pick. We've got Twitch. With the era of Zaya finally coming to an end, more and more hyper carries are beginning to appear. Whenever there's a time where Jinx, Zeri, and Aphilios thrive, Twitch will always be lurking in the shadows like the rat he is. Versus them, he's easily able to outscale with an early lead and can kill them on repeat. Even when you're not facing a hyper carry, you're still able to scale and become one of the strongest champions in the game. If you're looking for a meta counter that can 1v9 games, look no further than Twitch. Looking at Twitch's build, you're going to be taking Flash and your choice of Exhaust, Cleanse, or Heal as your summoner spells. As for your runes, make sure you take Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend of Alacrity, Cut Down, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. These runes may not give you much early game power, but they allow you to sell well and take over the game with only a few items. Speaking of which, your items are going to be Blade of the Rune King, Berserker's Greaves, Kraken Slayer, Infinity Edge, Rudin's Hurricane, and Ravenous Hydra. While Twitch can be a powerful counterpick to outlane and outscale other hyper carries, you won't always be versing them. In those matchups, Twitch has an extremely weak laning phase and takes time to scale. This means that you'll need a few kills or some great CS numbers in order to spike later on. That being said, Treasure Hunter will help you spike a bit faster and once you get runins with Hydra, you'll make entire teams disappear. Overall, Twitch is a great pick to practice even if you're in a non-favorable matchup. Moving on to our only support pick, we've got Yumi. Speaking of rats, even though she's a cat, Yumi has seen a massive fluctuation in her win rate. At first, many players were hard losing since they have no idea how to pilot her new kit. But with some trial and error, it was quickly learned that Yumi was now a powerful poke mage that could easily bully some champions out of the laning phase. Even after some adjustments, we don't see her going anywhere soon. So, it's best to learn her now before she gets any more nerfs. Diving into her build, you're going to want to take Exhaust and Ignite as your summoner spells. If your ADC wants to take Exhaust, just swap out for Heal instead. As for your runes, you'll be taking Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Presence of Mind, and Cut Down. These runes will help you poke the enemy early on, while also giving you some nice stats thanks to Mana Flow Band and Transcendence. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Shard of True Ice, Everfrost, Lucidity Boots, Chemtech Putrefire, Seph of Flowing Water, and Cosmic Drive. Yubi's new kit is pretty powerful on its own, and only gets better with a crit hyper carry. 
That being said, her reliance on champions can easily be her downfall, so you have to micromanage your team with proper pings and communication. On top of this, while she can be a lane bully, her first few levels are incredibly weak and make her vulnerable. The more time that passes though, the stronger she gets. Even with the removal of the root from her ultimate, she can root targets with Everfrost and can easily use its damage early on for the extra poke. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be super difficult and sometimes you'll need help or someone to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So, what are you waiting for? Join us! Last but certainly not least, we've got yet another powerful combo that has shown a lot of success in Korea. Let's give a warm welcome to the powerful duo of Cho'Gath ADC and Senna support. While we're not new to the various champions that can pair with Senna, Cho'Gath has been seeing massive success lately. These two dominate the game by letting Cho'Gath provide space for Senna to farm her souls early on. Should the enemy be too aggressive, these two easily punish them and get themselves ahead. With little to no real counter matchups, these two force the enemies to act, or else they'll get outscaled due to Cho's infinitely scaling HP and Senna's powerful soul mechanic. Let's start off by talking about Cho'Gath's build. For your summoner spells, you'll be taking Flash and Teleport. As for your runes, you'll be going Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Second Wind, and Unflinching. These runes give Cho'Gath a ton of poke power and allow him to stay in lane for longer thanks to his HP and Mana Sustain. Finally, your items are going to consist of Rod of Ages, Sorcerer's Shoes, Archangel Staff, Rabadons, Zhanyas, and finish off with Gargoyle Stone Plate. Moving on to Senna's build, you're going to be taking Flash and your choice of either Heal or Barrier. For your runes, make sure you take Grasp, Font of Life, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Presence of Mind, and Legend Alacrity. These runes will help you scale into a powerful marksman with a ton of HP. Plus, you'll even get bonus damage from your trades thanks to Grasp. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Black Mist Scythe, Umbral Glaive, Boots of Swiftness, Divine Sunderer, Black Cleaver, and Titanic Hydra. This powerful duel looks to take advantage of their infinite scaling to win the game no matter how long the game drags out. That being said, they're not by any means weak laners. Pre-level 6, they're able to play fairly aggressive off of Cho'Gath's Q since he can then silence and then Senna can easily auto-Q auto. While it's unlikely that you'll pick up kills early on, it's not impossible. Post 6, however, these two can easily change CC and tear any lane apart with their high damage, poke, and sustain. Thanks to their permanent wave priority, they should also be able to secure Dragon with ease early on which only adds more sacks to Cho'Gath's R and more souls to Senna's pocket. The most difficult part of this duo is not going to be respecting your opponent early on as Senna. While you eventually become super tanky, you're still very squishy early on and need a position accordingly. Overall, this duo is fairly hard to contest in any way and can easily win you games with enough practice. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, but don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.